What's up guys, my name is Brandon and iOS 13.3 has been out for about a week now and I want to give you guys an update on how it's been running for me on multiple devices in terms of performance, battery life, connectivity, some bugs that are still remaining. We're going to talk about some of your comments that you left on my last video and more. So I've been using iOS 13.3 on three devices throughout the past week. So of course on my iPhone 11 Pro Max, which I use every single day, I have been running iOS 13.3 on there. Also on my iPad Pro, I use that every single night and then also also on the iPhone 10R because I do have a video upcoming on the iPhone 10R. So I've been using that every day as well, just testing out things. So basically I want to give you guys an update once again on how everything has been performing. Now, one of the big things that was introduced with iOS 13.3 was the new feature inside of screen time. If we go into screen time right here, communication limits. That was the basically flagship feature of iOS 13.3. However, since iOS 13.3 was released last week, it did not take very long for people to find a bypass and basically a way around the communication limits set in place by this, basically where you can contact people you're not supposed to contact. And honestly, the bypass is a pretty simple bypass. All you have to do is add a contact with the same number, just like add it as a new contact. And then all of a sudden you're able to communicate with that person even when you're not supposed to because of the communication limits. So for that reason, for the fact that there is a flaw in this big feature in iOS 13.3 and a bypass, I would expect an update, a public release update, like a 13.3.1 to be out very soon. So I will talk about that and a release date for that software near the end of this video, but just giving you guys a heads up, we can probably expect another update very, very soon. But yeah, aside from this feature, which I don't use at all, obviously because I don't have kids and you know I don't set limits for myself on my phones but I've been enjoying the other things that iOS 13.3 brings to the table like the Memoji the ability to hide the Memojis and the emoji keyboard I no longer have to be annoyed by seeing all those Memojis over here which I do use sometimes but not all the time and sometimes I just want to go over and see my favorites my frequently used emojis and not my Memojis so it's been nice not having to deal with that and the emoji keyboard. The mail experience has also been great on iOS 13.3 and I can't really say that about any other version of iOS 13. Ever since iOS 13.0, there's been at least one issue that I personally had in the mail application. But now in iOS 13.3, everything is pretty much flawless for me. Now I don't have Outlook accounts or anything like that. I mainly use Gmail and you know the Google Suite and things like that. So I don't really have the Outlook emails, which I know a lot of people have issues with, but for me, everything is perfectly fine on the mail application. No lag, no issues with read and unread, no duplicated sent messages, nothing like that. No bugs at all in the mail application for me, which is a great breath of fresh air in iOS 13. Now, not everything is perfect with iOS 13.3 because unfortunately, I am still having the two major bugs that I've been talking about here on my channel for the past couple of weeks now. And the first one is of course with text messages. It has to do with the notifications for text messages. When my phone would be locked and just off like this, a lot of times I won't even get a notification, like my phone won't light up from the lock screen. I won't get any kind of sounds, no vibration, nothing when I get a text message. I won't know I have a text message until I tap on the screen to wake it up and then all of a sudden I see I have like three text messages but yet I haven't not heard any sound, no notification whatsoever from that. And even though I have notifications turned on, I have sounds turned on and still I get no notification, even still here in 13.3. And this has been going on since iOS 13.2. And the other bug that's pretty much just as annoying as the text message bug has to do with Instagram videos. And I don't think this has to do with the Instagram app. For some reason, I think this is iOS because I've seen multiple updates to the Instagram app and it still hasn't been fixed. So basically when I would play a video and I would go back to the home screen, that video would still continue playing in the background. I would be able to hear the audio and everything. I could lock my phone and I would still continue hearing the audio from that Instagram video, which is really weird because sometimes even if the video is playing and I would tap on it again to mute the video and then I went to the home screen and once it's been muted, I would still start to hear that video's audio even though I just muted it. So happens when you go into multiple applications as well. So like if you went out of Instagram and then went into Twitter, it would start playing the audio from that Instagram video in Twitter. Or if you went to like a phone call, I've had it when I was on a phone call before, just a really annoying issue. And I know I'm not the only one having this either because you can see here, people left comments on my last video where I talked about this as well. So it's definitely not just me. And for some reason, I think this is an iOS feature. Normally with third-party applications, I think it's an issue with the app itself. But to me, this seems like an issue with iOS. So hopefully Apple does get on this and fix it. Now, speaking of your guys' feedback on iOS 13.3 in terms of bugs and kind of issues you've been having 
Here were some of the most popular complaints in my video from last week, my what's new video on 13.3. So you can see here, Peter says, I hope they fix the volume one. When you're in the gym listening to music, a notification comes in and the volume never goes back to the original level. This also happens in the car. Now I don't have this and I don't think I've actually ever had this in iOS. I know that when you get a notification, your volume goes down temporarily and then it comes back up to the normal volume. So not really sure how that issue is happening, but my obvious solution would be to just flip the mute switch down so you don't get notification sounds, especially when you're in the gym. I don't think you really need to have those notifications going because it's just gonna distract you. So turn that mute switch down, then you won't get those notification sounds and you'll be able to hear your music at the normal volume. And you can see here, someone else said, I'm facing hotspot connectivity issue. We are not able to connect different devices with the iPhone network. So. I don't have any kind of issues with hotspot. I do use it from time to time. Uh, but if you are having issues with that, let me know down in a comment below. And then you can see here, Chamara or Kamara said, icons sometimes disappear, apps get closed automatically. So not sure how this has so many thumbs up. That leads me to believe that other people are having this issue, but I really don't even know <laughs> anything about this issue. Icons disappear and apps get closed automatically. I'm not really sure I understand that, but if you guys are having this issue and you can kind of translate that for me and you're having that issue, let me know down in a comment below. I just wanted to highlight some of these things to kind of get a grasp on the kind of issues that you guys are having. Because once again, I don't have all the issues that you guys are having and I wanna do my best to you know inform everybody, all my viewers of the issues going on and bring light to some of the more unique ones like this one. And then some of you guys also did report issues with third-party applications like WhatsApp, with Snapchat. I know one person commented saying that Snapchat was glitchy when you would take a snap on iOS 13.3, but I think that's an issue with Snapchat because that has happened before with iOS 13 and iOS 12, I believe even iOS 11, where it would be glitchy when taking a snap and then an update did fix that. But anyways, in terms of overall performance, nothing has changed since my initial video, my what's new video. It's exactly what I expected and exactly what I said in that video. Things are stable. I don't have any app crashes or random reboots or anything like that. Just those annoying issues that I mentioned earlier with the text messages and the Instagram videos, those are really the only two complaints I have with iOS 13.3. Other than that, everything is running perfectly fine. I mean, I don't have any kind of overheating issues. I know in my battery test video with the iPhone 11, I did have a lot of people concerned about the battery life and the overheating of the iPhone 11, but I've not had that issue since, I mean, what was it? Like iOS 13.1 or something like that. So it's been a while since I've had that issue and none of that has come back either. So everything else is perfectly fine here on 13.3. Now, with that being said, I have had issues with YouTube reloading again. So this was an issue a while back and it wasn't just YouTube, it was all applications, basically the RAM management issue, which Apple actually addressed and you know called it by what it was, a RAM management issue. It seems now that it's happening again in YouTube for some reason. Now, it happened multiple times on Sunday yesterday when I was watching a live stream. I would be watching the live stream, I would go out, I would go into my messages to respond to a text message, I would go back into YouTube, and all of a sudden, the app reloads and I'm not in that stream anymore. I have to go over to my library and then into my history, find the video again, click on it again, and then rewind back into the live stream for what I missed. So it's really, really annoying. And it happened like three times in a row, three times within like a 10 minute span, it reloaded. And I'm not sure if that has to do with it being a live stream and not a video or what, but it's still a major concern, a very big annoyance to me, still happening here in 13.3. So if you are having any issues with RAM management in iOS 13.3, let me know, specifically with YouTube, because YouTube's the only place where I had that issue. It has not been happening in Safari or anything like that. Now, as for the battery life, it's been great for me. I mean, it's pretty much been the same for the past few versions of iOS 13 for me. And most people I've seen in the comments section and on social media and things like that have also reported that battery life is perfectly fine. And some even said that their battery life has improved with iOS 13.3. So let's go ahead and take a look at the battery life on my iPhone 11 Pro Max. Of course, the device that I use every single day throughout the entire day. So if you go down to my battery, of course, my battery health is at 100%. And you can see here, let's go to my last 10 days here. You can see I'm averaging about nine hours, 24 minutes of screen on time, about 36 minutes of screen off time. So you can see I am using iOS 13.3 quite a bit. And of course the battery life is exactly the same to me as iOS 13.2.3 was. I'm not noticing any kind of improvements at all. It seems about the same to me. I still go to bed with about 30% of battery life remaining after using it throughout the entire day. I wish this could show you a little bit better of how battery life actually is for me on a day. You can see I do charge it 
off and on throughout the day as well. So these graphs don't really tell you too much about the actual battery usage uh, because I do charge it and things like that. So I kind of just compare it to previous versions and that's how I can kind of tell you guys how the battery life is. Now, if you're getting bad battery drain and things like that, if you're always complaining about battery life no matter what, I really suggest you watch my 25 plus tips for improving iOS 13 battery life because a lot of times the people that complain about bad battery life are just using their phone. I don't wanna say wrong, but you're just not really helping yourself by doing a lot of battery intensive and a lot of battery draining habits and, and things with your phone, like vibrations, like having loud audio, like having notifications for unnecessary things. I can go on and on. So I would just really recommend you guys watch that video so you can get better battery life regardless of the version or regardless of the phone you have. But overall, I have been pleased with the battery life on iOS 13.3. It's especially been good on my iPad Pro. Now that's one area or one device, I should say, where I did notice an improvement in battery life over 13.2.3. But with the iPhone 11 Pro Max and the iPhone 10 R, I've had about the same battery life as 13.2.3, which is still excellent battery life and definitely better than iOS 13.0. Of course, we are a ways away from that now, but I just kind of like to say that so you can see we have been improving with small iterations of iOS 13. Now, as far as connectivity goes, I've been having no issues with connectivity. I don't know why I'm showing my iPhone 11 here. I've never put my SIM card in this phone, uh, but as for connectivity on my iPhone 11 Pro Max, I've also put my SIM card in the iPhone 10R for about the past week. Uh, I have also been noticing that I do not have any kind of issues with dropped calls, no call failed issues, which I had a lot of early on in iOS 13, really no connectivity issues at all with Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, or LTE. So now let's go back to what I mentioned earlier, and that is iOS 13.3.1. When can we expect that? And of course, that is the presumed update coming to patch the communication limits bypass. So when can we expect that? Let's go ahead and open up the calendar here. So we can expect iOS 13.3.1 as soon as tomorrow, the 17th. Tuesday, the 17th, we could see this update. If not tomorrow, we could see it any time this week, really, the 18th, 19th, or the 20th. Now, I don't think that we could see it on the following week, on the week of the 23rd, because of course that is the week of Christmas, and then the week after that is the week of the new year. So if we don't get it this week, uh, we'd probably have to wait until the new year, like the week of the 6th, January 6th. But I don't think we're gonna have to wait that long. I do think we're gonna get it this week. And as far as a new beta goes, I don't think we're gonna get a new beta until the new year. So probably the week of the 6th is probably when we will get a new beta. And that is likely to be iOS 13.4. And that's pretty much the timeline as of now. So that's pretty much it as well for me for iOS 13.3. I think I've covered pretty much everything. So let me know if you guys have any other issues with iOS 13.3, if you have any good things to say about iOS 13.3. Also, let me know down in the comments below. I am also always looking for new issues and new things that multiple people have, not just anomaly things that just one person has. So I can report those to Apple and kind of just bring awareness to it. Like I mentioned earlier in this video, in my video so that maybe Apple can see it and maybe other people can see it as well. And of course, if you guys did enjoy this video and you enjoy these type of videos where I follow up and tell you guys about the problems and the good things and the bad things, all that stuff, let me know by hitting that thumbs up button. And of course, subscribe so you don't miss the next one. And you'll also be notified when the new update and the new betas come out as well. So definitely make sure you are subscribed so you don't miss any of that good stuff. But anyways, guys, thanks again for watching the video and I'll see you soon.